Hello guys and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. So this is going to be part one where I'm going to be showing you how to make this satisfying animation in Blender. It's not loopable, it's not too polished, I'm just getting the concept across there and it's just something fun to mess around with. Okay, So if this is something you want to watch and learn, this is going to be part one where I cover the modeling, using the cell fracture add-on, doing the physics, the animation, and then in part two we'll just add some basic materials and lighting and just you know polish it up and render it out as a final animation. I will be making these blend files available on my Patreon. You can check that in the description. But I've said enough, I think we can get started here and I hope you guys enjoy. So I'm gonna be using Blender 3.0 for this tutorial. I think technically you should be able to follow along even with Blender 3.8 and newer, you should be fine. Um, I don't think we're using any kind of new features. We're just gonna be using self fracture and rigid bodies. So with a new scene opened up, um, go ahead and select the default cube. We're going to go into our front orthographic view by hitting one on a number pad. So you can see I'm now in the front orthographic view and with the cube active, I'm just going to tab into edit mode. And in edit mode, I'm going to hit Z, I'm going to go wireframe. Then I'm going to go to my face select option. And I'm just going to select, drag and select to select only these two faces here. From the front, I'm going to hit X and delete faces. Now I'm going to go back into the solid view. So what we see here is just a box, a cube, with the face missing at the front and at the back. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit A to select all of the geometry. I'm gonna right click and click on the subdivide button at the top. Then come here to the subdivisions tab and let's make that 12. And once we're done with that, drop it down. And now what we're gonna do is with all of this active, we're gonna hit E to extrude. And then we're gonna go S, Shift, Y. So if we go S, Shift, and Y, it'll restrict the scaling to the Z and the X axis, so it won't do the Y. So we're gonna scale it in about that much. So you can see now, it hasn't scaled it in on the Y like this, which it would have if you only did S. So now with this done, we're gonna tab out. Let's go to our modifiers and let's give it a bit of rounding. So we're just gonna simply give it a bevel. And let's come here to the amount and just drag it down a little bit. About that much should be okay, maybe. Hold and shift, it makes it a little bit easier. So something like that, and then bump the segment count up. About three should be fine. And it should be set to angle on the limit method by default, which is good. Then come to the drop down and apply it. It's very important that you apply any modifiers. Go to object mode and enable shades move. So now we have this ready to fracture. So first of all, go to edit, preferences. And let's just make sure you have the right add-ons. So click on add-ons. Type up here search and type in cell and you should see object cell fracture. Make sure you enable that. It's not enabled by default, but it does come with Blender. So you don't have to worry about downloading it from some external source. So just make sure to tick that box. And now if you have this guy active here, you can hit F3 on your keyboard. You're gonna get your search options come up here. And let's type in cell and you're gonna see here cell fracture. So quick effects cell fracture, click on that. And what we're simply gonna do here, I'm not gonna even go through all of this here, but simply we wanna come here to child particles. I just find that's something I like best. If you wanted to, you can even use the annotation tool, draw all over this cube, and then use that as a fracture, fracture method. But for now, we're just gonna leave it at child particles. And the source limit here, we're gonna to change to 250. Now, it's probably obvious, but just so you know, the higher you set this amount here, the more little bits and fragments you're gonna have. So let's just set the source limit to 250. It's something that I found works quite well for this scene here. And then we're gonna go and click OK. Now, Blender is gonna you know, do this thing where it's gonna calculate and figure it all out. It takes a few seconds. It really depends on your computer, but um, my computer at the moment is running a GTX 750, so nothing too fancy. And like you can see, it did that just in a few seconds. So now what you're gonna see is all of these fragments here, but it still has our original cube. So now with all of this active, we're gonna go Control I or Command I to inverse the selection and just select our original cube. And we're gonna hit M and we're gonna go New Collection and let's go click OK. So now if we go to our collections here, just minimize the top collection. We should have the second collection here with our camera, our cube, our light and all of that. And we're just gonna untick it so we don't see it. So all we see are these fragments here these little sections. And by default, it's gonna have all of these sections as their own objects, and they're gonna all have their own origin point. This is pretty cool, because if some of you remember the very older versions of Blender, like Blender 2.78, for example, you would have to 
actually manually come in here afterwards and give all of these fragments their own origin point and you'd have to separate the meshes and all and all of that sort of stuff so the fact that it does it for you automatically like this is a um, really cool thing so what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of these and we're going to go g z and we're just going to move them up anywhere is fine just as long as it's above our ground here and we also want just to make sure that there's enough rotation space if we go like that okay so with that done we're also going to go shift a we're going to add in a plane and we're going to go s to scale it up about that much should be fine and then we're gonna, with that plane scaled, we're gonna go Control A and make sure to apply that scale. Anything that gets scaled, including these guys, you need to go Control A and apply the scale if that's the case, okay? So with that done, let's go just enable our second collection here and let's just select the camera and let's just go M and move it to the first collection because we actually want it. Then untick the second collection again. So now we have a camera. Let's hit zero to go into camera view. And let's just go to our camera settings and I'm gonna make this 95 on the focal length. Then with the camera active, I'm gonna go G to move it up. And G, middle mouse button to zoom back. And let's also just go to our camera settings or output settings, I should say. And let's make the X resolution 1080 at the top. So we have the square aspect ratio. Now just rotate your camera and move it you can also come here and just enable on the pivot transform, make that 3D cursor so you can rotate around the cursor. And now you can just, you know, make it what you want to make it. Just place your camera wherever. So this is um, completely up to you. I'm just going to go something like this for an example, but the camera placement is completely your own choice. We're more interested in just making the animation today. So now that we have that, let's grab all of our cubes here, all of our little fragments and while we have them all active, we're gonna hold in shift and select any one of them. So you're gonna see that one is now a lighter orange. That means it's active. So it's a primary active element here. And then we're gonna hit F, or actually we're gonna to go to our physics, click on rigid body, and we're just actually gonna leave everything as it is. Then we're gonna go hit F3, and we're gonna come here at the top and we're gonna search for copy. And then we're gonna click on copy from active. That now means that this active element here that had these physics properties under the rigid body have now copied that over to all of these other um, orange bits here. Okay, so now all of them, if you click on any one of them, you're gonna see under the physics here, it has that same property. But for example, if we select this plane, it doesn't have anything. So while we're at it, select the plane and then give that a rigid body. But this one, we want to be passive. We don't want it to move. So it's just gonna sit there. So change the type to passive and then come here to the shape. You can leave that as convex hull. Um, just come here though to the surface sensitivity over here. Enable margin and let's just make the margin 0 0.02. Okay, so just a little bit smaller. And now if we go to frame one on our timeline and we hit the space bar, we're gonna see this cool physics simulation. How cool is that? Okay, so if you go into your camera view, go to frame one again, hit the space bar, and you can see we have our physics. And that is really doing a lot of the work for you. So that's awesome. So now let's add a few more cool things. So going to frame one again, we're gonna go into our front view and we're gonna go shift A. Let's add in a cube. G, Z, move this cube up till it's on top of these guys here and go S to scale it down till it's inside of there. And then go S, Y, and scale it on the Y a little bit. Just like that, so it's nice and snug in there. Then go Control A and apply that scale. Now let's tab into edit mode. And with all of that active, let's go Control B to bevel. So Control B and we're gonna give it a bevel and then roll our middle mouse button to add some more segments in. Tab out, go to object mode and enable shade smooth. So now we've made that inner part. Once again, make 100% sure if you've scaled it to go and select it, Control A and apply that scale. Now, let's actually go into edit mode quickly of that one again. Just go into wireframe, go to your face select, deselect everything, go to your right view and just drag and select only these in inward faces in the inside, that loop. Shift D to duplicate and then you're going to go S to scale it up. Like so, S, Y and just scale it down in a Y just a bit. So that's just gonna enclose these fragments here. So if that's still active, we're just gonna go E to extrude and then we're gonna go S, 
Shift and Y again, so S, Shift, Y, to restrain the scaling only to the Z and the X axis like that. So it's limiting it to that and it's not doing the Y axis on the scale. So just something like that. And then while that's still active, we're gonna hit Control L to, sep to select all of that by itself. Then we're gonna hit P and we're gonna go separate by selection. Then we're gonna tab out and now this is its own object. And let's just go to our modifiers and let's give that a bevel modifier. And let's bring that amount down a little bit. And let's bring up the segment count, like so. And that should all be good. So now we have this guy here and this inward part, which we're gonna animate. But as far as they go, we also need to give them some physics. So let's go over to our physics. Let's make them rigid body. Let's make them passive. And we wanna make sure we wanna set them to mesh. And we also wanna go down here to the sensitivity. This is very important. We wanna bring that very low. So let's type in 0 0.001. If that is too big, it's gonna to have too much of a space in there, too much of a margin, and it'll cause these fragments to just explode, which we don't want. So make sure to set that margin really small, and then select the outer bit, create a rigid body, make it passive, and let's just make the shape here mesh, and come to the sensitivity, 0.001 should be fine. So now let's go to frame one, let's hit the space bar, and there we have that. If you see any sort of explosion ha explosion happening, you gotta come here and shrink that margin until you get it just working right. Okay, but for now, it's kind of where we want it, it's pretty good, um, but there are a few more things we wanna do. We wanna start animating this. So that's actually pretty easy to do. So let's select this inward part first, and let's come to frame 50, and on frame 50, we're gonna hit I, and we're gonna insert a rotation and location keyframe. And then we're gonna drag up to frame 65. Actually, let's go to frame seven. Let's go to frame 70. And on frame 70, we're gonna go I, and we're gonna insert a location and rotation key, and then go up to frame 90. And on frame 90, we're gonna go R, Y, and we're gonna rotate it like so. And we're gonna go I, insert a location and rotation key. So if just rotated it on the Y, so what we're gonna see is this, like that, okay? Let's go to frame here. In fact, let's just quickly go to scene properties, go and turn off rigid body world so we don't get the simulation. Otherwise, it's just gonna slow us down, okay? So we'll turn that on when we need to. So you're gonna see this animation here. But what we also wanna do is we wanna grab this outer bit and if this one, we wanna come to frame one and with frame one with it active, we're gonna hit I, insert a location and rotation key, then come up to frame 60 and then go G, Y and peel it back like so. Hit I and insert a location and rotation key and then go over to frame 85. Then you're gonna go R, X and you're gonna rotate it on the X like so and then hit I, insert a location and rotation key and then let's select the key on frame 60 again Shift D to duplicate it and drag it over to frame 110 so it'll go back to its place like that. Now at the moment, you're gonna see it's intersecting with this guy here. So let's just select that first one we made and let's just come at that point there just for a little extra effect and let's, where it's intersecting, let's go G, Y and just move it forward a bit, hit I and insert a location or rotation and let's just move up to frame 90 and just G, Y, move it forward a bit. I insert a location rotation. So all it's gonna do is just move forward out of the way a little bit as it's turning, which kind of just gives a little bit of a extra effect there as well, which looks pretty cool. So if you go to your right orthographic view, you should see these two animating, but you don't wanna see them interacting with each other, like that. So now what we can do is we can enable our rigid body world again, come to the drop down, and let's have the physics actually start at frame 30. So let's go over to the cache Let's come to the simulation start and make it frame 30. And let's make it end at something like 150. And let's come here to our end frame value and make it 150 so we have an animation that's 150 frames long. Go to frame one. And now let's go into a camera view, hit the space bar and run the simulation. And now we have that. Pretty cool. Now what you're noticing here is that it's not actually interacting with the animation because we need to select these objects here that are animated, go back to physics, and this time under the rigid body, we do have to tick animate it so Blender knows it's animated. So let's go over here, select the, this one here as well, and enable animate it. Now go back to frame one, hit the space bar, 
and now it should interact. So you're going to see when this one turns, they all kind of slide off, which is pretty cool. Now we're seeing a little bit of an explosion as it pulls off here, which we don't want. So let's just grab this guy in here, the, the small one. This is tab into edit mode, hit A to select everything and then go S just to scale it down a bit more. Okay, now let's go to frame one, hit the space bar and let's see, okay, that's a lot better. Okay, so it's not exploding. And let's just grab this big one, go into edit mode with it, A to select it and then S to scale it up just a bit. Go to frame one, now hit the space bar and let's just see if that's running better. Okay, that's running a lot better. I really like that. I kind of like how it just pops out. See here how you just get that nice little pop and that looks pretty cool. So it's not the most, you know, it's not the most accurate simulation. I can see some of these little bits are kind of intersecting with the geometry a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that. Uh, you can mess around with the settings till you get that all to work, but I'm really, this is for me just about kind of getting a satisfying result. And this really does feel satisfying. So here we have this animation. Let's just quickly, um, it's not a loopable animation, but let's just select our camera and let's go to frame one, hit I and insert a, a location. And let's go to frame 150, hit I, insert a location. Now come to 80 and then just G, middle mouse button and just zoom in a little bit and then hit I to insert a location. And then maybe move up to about 110, then hit G and move it down a bit and then hit I and insert a location. So now that we have some keyframes here, let's just go over to the edit type here. Let's go to our graph editor and let's just come here with that camera active. So make sure the camera is actually active. Let's just come over here to the settings and then click on the object transform, then hit the N key and that's gonna bring up some properties here. Um, actually come to the drop down here and then click on the X location. And then you're gonna come over here. In fact, click on X location and hold in shift and then select all of these um, vectors here, the X, the Y and the Z locations. And then we're gonna come over here in our properties panel. And we're gonna to go to modifiers and then go add modifier and let's add a noise. And now if we hit the space bar, we're gonna get this jitteriness to the camera, which is a bit too intense. So let's come to the scale and make it 30. And then hit it again and let's see what that looks like. Okay, cool. Now we've got some nice camera movement. Let's come to the strength and make it 0.2 or 0.5. Maybe even 0.6, so go with 0.6. Okay, now let's have a look at that. So now we've got some movement in the camera here, which is kind of being generated by some noise. So it doesn't look just like a stagnant um, camera. So let's also go now back to our edit type and let's go back to our timeline. So just that little extra feature there um, could make things look quite cool, which I think you guys would like. Um, let's just actually come to frame 81 and let's just move the camera. Maybe just a little bit more this way. Hit I and insert a location. Let's have a look at that. Okay, cool. I just like having that camera movement there. So pretty much this has been part one on making the animation, setting up the physics. And in fact, let's just quickly cache this out. I'll quickly show you. So let's quickly go to our scene properties, go to the rigid body world, make sure to save this blend file, and then make sure that it starts at 30, ends at 150, and let's click bake. So now it's gonna bake this simulation for us. Okay, it looks like it's already baked it in my case. And I'm just gonna once again, save the blend file. So now this is baked into a blend file. I guess even if I, you know, select one of these pieces and go in and out of edit mode, and I go back, it doesn't have to rerun the whole simulation. It's now cached into Blender. So we spent about 20 minutes now. Part one is done. Let's go over to part two, which you can check out on my channel. We'll add some materials and lighting and then render this out as a final animation.